G'day all, I'm Graham Sanders and I live at Townsville, North Queensland. That's where Latitude 19 crosses the east coast of Australia. I'm doing a series on the species Tetragonula sapiens. Well, this is part six and it's the 18th of March. And I'm learning a lot about sapiens, including one thing, they're not as robust as Hocking's eyes when it comes to doing a new hive. You will notice I have reset up the whole setup now and the foam hive is now right next to the cement hive. But further, what's prompted me to do that? Well in the last two days I saw less and less activity coming out of this hive when it was positioned here. Even after I recruited a whole lot of foragers from the cement hive. And I couldn't work out what was going on. And then two days ago, I started to see newly emerged bees all around the outside of the hive. Well, I thought that was unusual, but maybe sapiens do that. But then the giveaway was this morning, right in this area about here, I saw oozing stuff coming out. And as soon as you see oozing stuff coming out of any native beehive, it's in trouble. So I opened up this hive this morning and there's still brood in there and it's still hatching, so that's healthy. But as soon as I got into the area below the brood, I saw maggots, little fly maggots, I'm guessing. Anyway, that means this hive got infected with fly larvae and that's why the young bees were leaving. So here I have a hive that I have spent time trying to get started. What do you do on when that situation occurs? The induction or your brood lift doesn't go to plan. Well you use the strength of the mother hive to fix things up and this is what I've done. If you look carefully I've connected a tube between the mother hive and this hive. It's now become an induction. Budding, induction, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to use the strength of this hive to repair this hive. Now the maggots, yeah, are causing grief in this hive, but by forcing the bees into this hive, they're going to hopefully fix it up. Well, that's what happens with Hocking's Eyes bees. Now, this was done about a quarter of an hour ago. You can see returning bees. They're still trying to find their way to the new entrance, but they're starting to go in. They're starting to realize that's the way in. Sort of smells right, but doesn't. And it'll take a day at least for this to properly um, recover. Now, what I don't want to see is this mother hive just drew a tunnel straight through from here to here and bypass the brood. I'm hoping the brood still in here will encourage this hive to clean out this hive and thus we get a recovered situation. So as I've told you before, brood lifts are a bit more difficult and you've got to monitor them and you've got to act quickly if a problem occurs. So now I've done induction. If you want to know this induction technique, look up um, the first couple of videos where I talk about budding induction, eduction, um, and how to do it. And I show you how I set up this hive previously. Well, I've redone it again. And uh, we're going to monitor this now for the next few days. You'll get even more videos on it.